What's going on, guys? My name is Julian Young. I'm the host of the Blockchain Brief, where every episode we are interviewing innovators and founders in the blockchain and crypto space. Uh, today on my side, we also have our technical analyst, Remy Guy, joining us as we interview Zichi Chen and Weiyang Wang, the founders of Cortex Lab. Gentlemen, it is great to have you guys here today on the Blockchain Brief. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so why don't we jump into it? Uh, would you guys mind kind of giving a little bit of background on yourselves as well as your team? Okay, uh, start from me. So um, um, I, I studied uh, uh, engineering in my undergraduate and then go to United States, uh, changed my major to computer science, major in machine learning. Then when I uh, graduated in 2013, I jumped into the cryptocurrency world start doing uh, trading and uh, mining. So, um, but later on, I shift to the uh, technical development field to uh, develop uh, like a digital wallet and a mining pool. Uh, so uh, basically I, I start to thinking about to have a great blockchain, which has a strong endorsement of a, some digital asset on it. Uh, probably the AI, because my major is from machine learning. Then I met with Wei Yang in 2017 to form the idea and to start this project. Uh, from me. Hi, Wei Yang. Uh, I have a background in applied mathematics. Uh, I'm in, in Tsinghua University. And after I graduated from uh, University of Chicago, Department uh, of Statistics, uh, I became a, a machine learning engineer uh, in industry for six to seven years. And back to 2016, I I just entered the blockchain world, and my first project is an ABS system on IBM Hyperledger. But uh, later, uh, several months later, I I became uh, uh, I, I started to realize that uh, Ethereum uh, virtual machine is much better in this world. And from some ideas uh, after that, I met Zichi and I'm a core team member to form a team to form a Cortex Lab team. That's it. Fantastic. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the problem that you guys are looking to solve as well as how big the market is. Okay. So the problem we are trying to solve is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, I assume you guys are familiar with Ethereum smart contract. So uh, you have a smart contract. If you want to uh, run it, you want all the network get consensus on the smart contract. The contract has to be run on each four node. Um, so if you open any smart contract through the uh, etherscan.io, you can see the competition part is quite simple. So there are just a couple, of, uh, I, I would say just hundreds of lines of code. It's very short program. It's running on CPU. It's not uh, powerful enough to execute any AI program. So. You know, AI program is a uh, modern program, it's more interesting. So what we are trying to sell is just uh, every smart contract can execute AI competition to get a consensus over the whole network. So in terms of the uh, market, um, I think all the computation things require AI um, inference can use our infrastructure. Basically, this is like the uh, infrastructure public blockchain. Very good. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's the perfect segue in to talk a little bit more about Cortex, right? Uh, you know, may, maybe Wei Yang, if you want to take this question, um, would love to have you just kind of explain what Cortex is exactly and how does it address the problems that uh, Zichi just, just highlighted? Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, several main topics. The uh, first main topic, uh, we, we we want to solve is a uh, CVM, the Cortex virtual machine. Uh, put it simple. Uh, put it in uh, a little bit uh, technology word, uh, words. Uh, that's uh, we want to bring the tensor computations and matrix computations into the Ethereum world uh, to make uh, AI computations feasible on the public blockchain. Um, and we also want to build. Uh, auto ML like systems and the other MLs especially from Google but uh, these systems can bring us a fantastic uh, algorithm fantastic AI models to solve real world uh, real world problems and, and later uh, we just uh, want to establish a ecosystem uh, 
uh, on the blockchain uh, because uh, Cardex is system. Um, uh, we want to embrace mining to make my uh, make mining great again. So we we want to uh, price the models with uh, uh, price the uh, uh, AI models correctly and to uh, make these uh, AI models run on the blockchain with some um, economic rewards. And basically, it's, that's the main point. Very good. Um, so would you mind walking me through some practical use cases um, and then maybe even highlighting uh, some AI dApps that you think are, are going to be very, very exciting to build upon Cortex? I think the most exciting uh, product and the uh, most promising thing is probably uh, the self-driving cars. So uh, I think AI on blockchain is very suitable for machine to machine transaction. See, if you have two cars meeting in the cross, the, the cross of the road, who will go first or who will go later? Maybe the first guy will pay the, pay the you know, machine come after that. So when the conflicts, so who has a higher priority, who has to pay a little micro payments? So to achieve that consensus over the whole network, you need some inference. So you know the self-driving car, there are a lot of uh, cameras. So that's one of the possible use case. Um, put it in a simple way, it's like, you know the scaling issue, we're not solving the scaling issue. Scaling issue is like uh, you have uh, printers. So the current Ethereum network is like a, a, just a normal printer. If you want to solve the scaling issue, you have a faster printers. You print fast. However, what we are solving is the real the, is the computation uh, power for the smart contract. So we are sort of making a 3D printer in that in that sense. So uh, that's quite a little bit different. We're just uh, focusing on the computing part on each each four nodes. Got it. And I, and I guess to piggyback onto that, um, can you explain to me like when the token would be used uh, in, in your model? So uh, we uh, that uh, a similar idea from Ethereum, the use gas. So when you run the program, you have to uh, consume a lot of computational resources. So you have to pay for that. That's the idea of the gas. We use a, uh, another term called endorphin, which is uh, you know is to something like related to brain. So um, each model on the blockchain, if a D app developer wants to call the model, so the model is running on each four node. It will take a lot of resources, so it's metered basically. So the model hoster will earn. For will earn from the, uh, uh, you know, running the model and they contribute the con computational power. And the DApps developer can get economic benefits if people are using their apps. Got so it. they will just pay for that. It's like a, just a supplier to the DApp developers. Got it. No, that makes complete sense. Um, Remy, I believe you had a couple of questions you wanted to ask the guys. Uh, feel free to jump in at this point. Yes, uh, so just to put our viewer into perspective on the project you guys are working on, if we were to compare the current machine learning process you know, on, on more centralized data um, ver no, versus the decentralized process, like what are some advantages that basically Cortex is offering in this new type of model uh, system? Um, comparing to the centralized, like a big company, like the Google, Facebook, so basically, they they are too centralized. So uh, they don't share data with you. They don't share the model with you. Uh, their machine learning things are pretty confined and constrained. It's like a, a private uh, properties. So uh, what we are showing is to put a lot of uh, fancy and the good enough uh, models on the blockchain to make machine learning model. Um, more widely used by the D app developers. So, um, and 
the use case is a little bit different. So the AI on the blockchain in Cortex, we are pretty much focusing on inference. We want the inference competition to get the same results. We call consensus. So uh, it's not all the machine learning program need a consensus. Only a certain uh, in a certain scenario, you need consensus. For example, your credit reading, right? You have a credit report, then you want the reading get some, uh, you, you know, public verifiable results. So in that case, you need it. You need a blockchain. So there are different use cases, and uh, we are pretty much focused on the inference. Yeah, uh, another interesting uh, use case is uh, from bioinformatics. Uh, sometimes uh, you want to ensure uh, that your face can unlock your phone, unlock your uh, wallet uh, usages, and that's it. And sometimes you have to ensure that the model itself is not an AI malware or uh, it doesn't have any AI more functions. So you have to ensure that the uh, the same in, uh, the same image input is going through all the full nodes and uh, exactly the, the same output is gathered to make a consensus and that's a really really difficult in the floating number computation world so we make all the systems on the uh, fixed number world to make this happen and that's it um, and one more uh, comments yeah. I think uh, you know there are a lot of product talking about like a prediction market and decentralized uh, advertisement system, things like those. So basically prediction market and uh, uh, as a market, you basically you, what you have is just a model based on the user input, the behavior, you recommend something or you predict something. What if the model is public? That makes more sense. Because if the model is still centralized and you know it's a hidden, blockchain is just a transactional thing to make sure this transaction is secure and uh, not reversible. It's not more transparent. If you make the model on the blockchain, at certain point, you, your inference is like this result, and everybody, every one of them see the result. That's more fire. That's. Some use yeah, I love the idea of having uh, open source models. I think this is really going to help uh, a lot more people join into, you know, helping develop, optimize the current models. So in the case of, you know, because it's open source, in case someone steals the model, do you guys have ways to protect that or prevent that? The model is like, a, it's like a, you're a, a game developers. You're, you have a source code. You build a one version of your game, you distribute, and everybody, you know, people play your game. It doesn't hurt, you update your game. And then nobody can steal your source, source code. The model is like a, the result from the training. You still have your data. That's why we don't talk about training on the blockchain. There are a couple of other issues like a privacy, data privacy and the security things, um, homographic encryption, those things. Um, so we don't talk about training on the blockchain. We just get your result on the blockchain. And the original owner can still update your model. Your model is being caught by other DApps. That's it. Okay. Uh, so back to what you just said. So if another researcher wants to improve your model, how would that process look like? Uh, 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 they, are, they will use reinforced learning or transfer learning to improve their results, and that's one way. Another uh, another way is uh, we are welcoming the de developers worldwide uh, to build uh, machine learning or deep learning uh, operators layers uh, or modules uh, to to merge into our uh, trunks, to merge into our GitHub uh, GitHub uh, projects. So we are. Uh, we will have uh, uh, various uh, modules to form a much better uh, model. So that's, uh, that's another way. And the, uh, the model zoo itself is also involving. So we are implementing reinforced learning and techniques or 
uh, genetic algorithm techniques. That's it. And uh, one more comments. Um, so, for example, there's uh, somebody uh, like a machine learning researcher who want to improve the model. We still provide the uh, computational power. You know, we have already got uh, like thousands of uh, GPUs that's dedicated for the training. Um, you know, we are not talking about training on the blockchain, but we offer the uh, computational power resources, maybe in a uh, federated chain or like the hyperledger or something like we build some uh, training center. We will have a, a example training center available to the uh, machine learning researchers worldwide. That's going to be much cheaper than uh, you spend money on AWS GPU cloud or Ali GPU cloud. That's going to be much cheaper. Yeah, Got it. That, that, sounds, that sounds great. Uh, about GPU, because you mentioned GPU, uh, I noticed that you guys have something unique. Uh, you guys would like to emphasize on the one machine, one vote system. Uh, could you walk me through your thinking? Why would you choose this versus the traditional proof of, proof of work? Uh, yes, the <laughs> mining part. Because uh, it's a long time dream for a cryptocurrency where people want to have a one vote, one machine back into the beginning of the, you know, the Satoshi white paper. So, you know, some people hack because the, the shard 250 is so easy to be coded on the ASIC. So um, there are some complex uh, POW algorithm, or say consensus algorithm, uh, like a cuckoo cycle. That's what we are working on. Uh, but that's only one uh, POW. What we want to do is to jump a POW, which means at the certain block, we use this hash function. At the next block, we will select other function, hash function. So um, the rules will be public, okay? So each four node has a, the same consensus, like the rules consensus to pick which hash function will be uh, selected for a specific block. In that case, the ASIC miner cannot, you know, the a ASIC mining machine is difficult to build ASIC miners basically because the POW keep changing, keep changing. So uh, one, uh, one thing we need to pay attention is to make the uh, adjustment of the difficult smoothing because if you jump between different POW, you need to ensure the interval of the block tab is cons consistent basically. People don't want to wait, you know, one hour to get one block, one confirmation. That's not good. Um, there are a lot of researchers, and we have advisors from DAG Labs, Guy Coro, and uh, he proposed a lot of things. He has a, a, a blog. We are working with him closely to solve this issue. Okay, and I guess from uh, from your white paper, you mentioned that you know people will be about will be able to mine Cortex through their phone uh, during nighttime, and um, yeah, I think this idea is is, is quite novel. Uh, and uh, it really allows more people to jump into your system, help secure the network versus traditional, you know, miners owning ASICs that are harder for common people to access. Uh, so last question is regarding your, your roadmap. Uh, I saw you guys have used, you know, Bernard, uh, Dolores, and uh, Arnold, and these are all characters from Westworld, a uh, very popular show here that uh, we all watch here in the U.S. Uh, could you guys walk us through uh, what made you guys choose these characters uh, for these specific ro um, milestones? Okay, so um, this starts from our ultimate goal is to put mines uh, on the blockchain. So there are some companies in the Silicon Valley is talking about how to upload your brand. So you have a lot of sensors, you have uh, fancy equipment, to get all the sensor data. And when you, once you get the sensor data, you do a machine learning training, you get a model. The model is representing some intelligence Then you upload. So we say, why don't we upload to the blockchain? So for the each smart contract or inference of thinking, get some consensus for the transactional things. So that's the ultimate goal. Um, 
So you know the show, the Westworld. Then now we choose the the name of the the actors, the actress for our milestone in the roadmap. Um, but from the beginning, you know the human brain is probably too difficult and too complex. It's like 100 billion neurons probably, and the best computer uh, today probably from the deep mind or. Um, the Alpha Zero, Alpha Go Zero, right? Alpha Go Zero is like a eight billion, maybe eight, eight billion neurons. But we still see there are. We believe at some point people may achieve that, then upload the model of the brain on the blockchain. From the beginning, we probably uh, there is a one guy in our team, uh, the advisor. Uh, he's actually the uh, core team. His name is Ken Jia. He probably going to work on some like bugs to observe the bugs for the whole life and record all the behavior of the bugs and the training that they training a model from the behavior and upload to the blockchain. Very well, that good. does sound like Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, this is some really awesome stuff. Um, so, so really quick here, would you just kind of mind letting us know, like, how far along are you guys with this project? Uh, obviously, you have an incredible uh, list of investors, an incredible list of advisors, but would love to have you guys talk through just where you guys are um, with everything that you have done so far. Um, we are still hiring, so we are <laughs> still hiring. Uh, in terms of the development work, we have a prototype. And uh, uh, if you notice, there are some experiments in our um, white paper. Because remember, I'm, uh, I said we don't solve the scaling issue, but we don't want the AI competition inference will be the bottleneck for the smart contract. So we have some preliminary code in our GitHub. We are not releasing yet, but we probably going to change to public soon. So um, in the um, experiment, we show that um, if you have a four node, let's say eight uh, GPUs, which has uh, 100 gig of uh, the RAM on the GPU. So we keep inference on different model in the model do. The model do is loaded into the eight GPU rig. So the performance is not going to be the bottleneck compared to 20 transactions per second on the Ethereum network. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin is a seven transaction. So uh, that's what we have done. And we are currently um, um, still uh, doing some uh, language feasibility study or technical feasibility study for the virtual machine because the virtual machine is a big task. We need to uh, make virtual machine running on the GPU instead of a CPU. CPU is, you know, Ethereum is run on the CPU. Yep. So, um, that's what we are doing. And uh, yeah, basically hiring and doing some uh, uh, marketing and the skill, uh, attracting machine learning or researchers. And we uh, actually have a, a group of researchers in the AI domain. And there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of researchers they feel very interested for this project. Uh, this group of researchers contribute half of the paper published in the AI domain. In from the Great China area, wow. so maybe a quarter of the whole paper in the in the world every year. So it's a very you know top quality. Uh, yeah, uh, in the AI part, uh, we are targeting the most recent papers uh, worldwide, not only from uh, mainland China but also from uh, Canada, uh, from US. And so we are uh, we are doing uh, we have reproduced these papers. Uh, some some papers that just uh, they are just published for only one month, but we are putting uh, we are putting together uh, to put put them in uh, put these papers put these results put these models into one system into one auto ML like systems to make it better. So um uh, I uh I have a team a uh, deep insights in my last company. We are we are already doing that for several months. Uh, I, I believe some part of Cars lab practices, um, 30% or 40% done, especially the AI auto, auto ML part. So uh, at least in this part, I'm very um, self-confident. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, so Very like good. you see, a little uh, uh, do much much work in uh, in the mining part. So, so yeah. we're not start from the very beginning. Very yeah. good, very good. Well, well, guys, no, I I really do appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers before we sign off here? Uh, are there any uh, questions you didn't mention? <laughs> <laughs> I know we ran a little bit over here, but um, yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted to give us any details on your upcoming ICO, um, on your upcoming token uh, token generation event. If you can share anything, I think that would be great. A roadshows, a roadshows plans. No, I think you mentioned the ICO as well. The fundraising? Fundraising, token generation event. If you can add any color oh. around that, that would actually be great. Oh, actually, we started the uh, fundraising uh, back into uh, February 10th, and we are uh, massively oversubscribed um, just in two days. It's, it's just a private placement. We received more than uh, 300K Ethereum. Our hot cap is only 40K. So, um, wow. um, so yeah, there, 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 there are a lot of uh, requests. So, so most likely, will there not be any public ICO, and then you'll probably just close it out with uh, in the private sale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a close, and gotcha. we are targeting on listing on uh, you know mainstream exchange pretty soon, and Very distribute good. the the private sale. Fantastic. Well, guys, congratulations on all the progress. Uh, really, really looking forward to continuing to track your project, um, and thank you again so much for taking the time to be on the blockchain brief today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, guys.